In this tutorial, we're going to customize a shape, give it a plastic material, duplicate this into a long wiggly tube for no apparent reason, add a reflective surface, play around with some colors, and if you want to bring it to life with a cute heart emoji, well, that's up to you. Let's get started. Rightio, so we're now in Dimension. First of all, I'm going to select the canvas and change the canvas size to 1920 by 1080. Next, from the basic shapes panel, I'm going to drag the torus into the scene. And the torus can then be customized from the property inspector on the right. You can change things like ring radius, pipe radius, and even customize the number of sides. We can also adjust the slice. So by default, this is set to zero. And as you increase the value, the shape will gradually disappear. Let's set this to 180 degrees for a half pipe shape. We can then press R on the keyboard for the rotate tool and rotate this around freely, or hold shift to snap this to 15 degree increments. Okay, one done, three to go. Let's just move this out of the way here and now duplicate this object with command or control D. Now we can move this duplicate out and then use the rotate tool to rotate this the other way up. Let's drag this up into the air and then click this icon here to make sure it snaps to the ground plane. Now you can adjust the camera by using 1, 2 and 3 on the keyboard respectively. These are the orbit, pan and dolly tools. And now I can move this shape up and to the right so that they both line up. We can now zoom in and orbit that camera to get a better angle and then just move this a little bit closer. Okay, looking pretty good. Now we can drag over everything to select, duplicate both of these shapes, and then move them to the right until they both line up. And if you're a perfectionist like me, it's always a good idea to zoom in nice and close to make any final adjustments. Next, I'm going to select the end piece and rotate this 60 degrees by holding shift. I'm then going to orbit the camera to a nice high angle and move this into position. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this. For me personally, I like to continuously keep orbiting the camera to get a different angle and then keep making final adjustments until everything is lined up perfectly. Ah, there we go. Now that we've created this wiggly worm shape, it's time to select the camera and then drag that field of view all the way down to one degree to remove any perspective. And if I zoom back out, you can see we have something very similar to an orthographic camera. And you can select the canvas and uncheck grid if those thicker grid lines become distracting. Okay, time to make some final adjustments to the camera, drag over everything, group these together, and then give this group a name. We'll go with wiggly tubes. And then with the group selected, I'm actually going to rotate the entire thing up ever so slightly. Now let's add a splash of color. Select the environment and from the color picker, select a color of your choice. And for now, I'm going to start with a yellow. Next, navigate over to the materials panel and select plastic and drag this onto the group. I can then double click any object in that group. And then from the color picker, I can select the same color or give it a different color. Click this icon at the top to get a real-time preview of your render. And if I increase the roughness, this will make the surface less reflective. If I bring it down, it becomes more reflective. Now, because we've spent so much time setting up the camera, it's probably a good idea to go to the camera bookmark menu, click the plus icon, give your bookmark a name, and this ensures that if I do adjust the camera by mistake, I can open this up and snap back to it in an instant. So now that's all done, let's zoom all the way out, switch over to the models tab, and then drag a plane into the scene. From the property inspector on the right, let's make this plane massive. We'll go with 500 by 500. And if we click and hold on the sampler tool, we can select the material sampler and sample the same material from the wiggly tubes. We can now snap back using that camera bookmark and then preview this. You can see the surface is now much more reflective. So let's double click the plane object and then from the color picker, we can change the color of our plane. However, it changes the color of everything. First, we'll need to unlink this by clicking this break link icon. 
Now we can change the color of that plane independently from the wiggly tubes. The wiggly tubes, what even is this video? Anyway, let's bring that roughness down to make the surface even more reflective. And I'm then going to tweak the colors ever so slightly for both the plane and the tubes. Pipes, toruses, tori, whatever. I'm gonna go with yellow again and then give this a render. And there you go, we've created a lovely wiggly worm pipe tube torus. And now I'm going to take a moment to fine tune the design. And there we go, it's looking pretty good. And if you want to go completely mental, well, there's always this. <laughs> that was fun. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this madness. Ding the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.